Hello friends, welcome back to our little coffee club. Today is going to be round two of the Breville Infuser versus the Lalit Bianca. Now it's the second time I try recording this video. Uh, the very first time I tried recording it, I kind of mentioned, I think on the previous video, and I had to pretty much scrap the whole project because I had to, on that day I had to pull so many shots to get the perfect shot from each machine. I think it took me, actually it took me like five shots on each one, I think it was. And by the end of all of those shots, not only did the GoPro blow up, that, well, <laughs> well not a, the GoPro didn't actually blow up, but the battery blew up. The back of the battery came off and I lost like a really long clip that I had recorded. And besides that fact, I actually ran out of coffee. So like, you know, I just decided, you know what, at this point, I'm just gonna scrap this whole project and record it another day. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna, we're gonna do round two of the Brevo Infuser versus the Lelite Bianca. Now I'm doing it on a coffee that I'm extremely familiar with. And as a matter of fact, on the last video, I had all these coffees up here and man, I, I'm so crazy. I like, <laughs> you know, I talked a whole bunch that day. There was a lot going on. I spoke to you guys for quite a while and I forgot to mention about these things, but the reason why they were up here is because I ordered something from Black and White. I had, the, you know, they had been on my radar as far as uh, trying them out. I saw this coffee come up and I thought it was a perfect opportunity. Uh, this is one of those funky processed coffees that I gravitate to, that I'm enjoying a whole bunch. And you know, I thought, let's give it a shot. Let's, let's order it this time. Let's go ahead and order this one. So here it is and I'm gonna review it. Um, who knows, maybe next video. I also got a couple of coffees from Good Brothers. One of them I already tried. This is the second go around of this one. So it's actually the second go around of this coffee here. Uh, the Congo Kivu, man, I don't know what, <laughs> what's going on with my voice. The Congo Kivu, uh, I tried before. It was awesome for espresso. And I mentioned in other previous videos that it's maybe my favorite espresso uh, coffee that I've, that I've tried for just the straight shots. It was perfectly balanced between a little bit of acidity and a, and a bunch of sweetness. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I went ahead and ordered another bag so we can have another go around with that one. Now this one I never tried. It's one of the new coffees and you know, we'll review it. I think I'm gonna do this one next and then we'll do the other Good Brothers coffee. And uh, you know, eventually we'll get around to pulling some shots of this Congo Kibo. I'm sorry about my voice. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but anyway, the show must go on. So this coffee is the one that we are going to uh, use today for for round two of the Brevo Infuser versus the Lalit Bianca. This is a coffee I'm extremely experienced with and I have, and I've tried over and over again. I've pulled, I would say maybe 50 shots or more with this coffee. Out of those 50 shots or so, perhaps I've gotten three or four that have been what I call perfect, okay? So for me, you know, for perfect is gonna be different for everyone, it depends how much acidity and sweetness, that balance between the acidity and the sweetness that you like. Uh, for me, on this coffee, you know, uh, I want just a little hint of the acidity up front and then it becomes sweet, really nice and smooth and you just get this caramel taste. Not only on the taste, not only on the flavor, but also on the aroma. It's just like pure caramel. You, you guys have seen me talk about this coffee over and over again. And in my opinion, you know, for just like a regular store-bought coffee, something you could just go to any supermarket and pick up a bag. This is like my favorite one. Um, this coffee is a true medium. And not only is it a true medium, but it has a pretty high level of acidity. So when you make pour overs with this, um, you know, you get that nice acidity up front. Again, then you get like, like a caramel type flavor, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of milk chocolate in there, little fruitiness, uh, and you know that's what you get as far as the pour overs, which is it's it's great. The it, you know the flavor is not as complex, it's not as the depth of flavor is. You know we've had specialty coffee. Let me see, how, how do I word this? Okay, uh, I've had a bunch of specialty coffees that the depth of flavor is just there's just more there, right? There's more there. And as far as acidity, you can, there's some that, that give you like a lot more acidity than this. And there's some that, you know, it depends if there's some that give you none, but 
you know, for something you could just go down to the store and pick up a bag, I think this is great. So this is the one I'm gonna use, and, and again, because I'm so familiar with it. And that's kind of what happened with the other video, um, that, you know, when I was recording it, I wanted to get that perfect shot. Not like a good shot, not like a great shot, I wanted the perfect shot. And again, I've pulled like 50 shots with this coffee, I've only gotten it perfect two or three times. We'll see today. Now, to make the process easier and to make sure that my camera's not gonna blow up or like I'm gonna run out of coffee again or anything like that is gonna happen, the coffees are already dialed in on both machines. The coffee is dialed in on both machines. Okay, so the grind size is quite different. Uh, you know, I dialed it in a few days ago. I hope nothing's changed. And then we get some weird results today. But the grind size on the Bianca is at 13 on the niche. And on the, on the Brevo Infuser, the grind size is 20. That's a pretty big difference. Uh, again, uh, for the coffee to come, for you to get like the perfect shot with the coffee, uh, you know, it needs to brew for a long time. So for some of you guys out there, you might say like, wow, you know, he's like over a minute. That's like ridiculous. Why would you need to? <laughs> if you've been watching all the videos, then you know my preferences. Uh, you know, I don't want any bitterness. That's for sure. But I want to, again, just get that upfront little hint of acidity and for the coffee to then just round off into sweetness and that caramel flavor that this coffee gives me. That's what I call the perfect shot with this coffee. And in order to achieve that, you kind of need a long extraction. And for that reason, I think this is where the Bianca is gonna kind of pull ahead from the infuser because on the infuser, you can pull a shot for a minute and no longer than that because the machine just stops running. So uh, on the Bianca, you can keep the pump running as long as you want and, <laughs> you know, and go for a minute or longer. So I plan on doing a long pre-infusion, okay, like I like doing, uh, maybe 30 seconds, and then ramp up for, uh, I, I wanna say, I think it was taking another 45 seconds. So the total shot time should be about a minute and 15 seconds, okay, to get like the perfect shot from this. On the infuser, I think with about 45 to 50 seconds, it should be right there. And that's what we should be able to get today. So let's just, you know, I already dosed out and everything. I wanna kinda of speed this process along and make sure I don't get stuck like last time pulling a bunch of shots. Let's hope that things work out. Again, I dialed it in a few days ago, so hopefully nothing's changed. Let's go to the other counter, grind the coffee and pull the two shots and then we'll compare them. So I have you guys on a nice angle here to see the grinding of the coffee. I have the first 18 grams here. Now, you know what? We're gonna check retention as we always do. So let me start the scale right here. I think you guys, let me make sure you guys could see that. Yeah, you can kinda, kinda see it. It's not perfect, maybe like this. Little better. A little better. I think you guys could see there. So we got 18 grams. I'm going to put this at zero because I didn't, you know, obviously didn't tear it before. So it's at zero. So after we grind, it should be zero. No plus anything or minus anything. That means the same thing we put in is the same thing we got out. All right, here we go. 18 grams. the little tap let's see okay so you see it is zero we didn't have any retention whatsoever uh, so we got our first 18 grams I think maybe we'll start with the Bianca let's uh, set things up a little bit different so you guys could see the the rest of the puck prep 
Okay, so we have a new angle here. Hopefully things are focused and everything's good there. Okay, this is dry. I haven't pulled any shots. So we're good to go. Let's do the, let's do our usual declumping in the cup here. You know, if you just ran into this video and there's something here that you wanna get an explanation for, or there's something you wanna you know, ask a question, I answer everyone. So leave me a comment below. I'll make sure to answer you. I'll tell you the reason why I'm doing uh, one thing or another. Again, tamping station. Okay, yeah. You know, man, Posado, come, Posado. <laughs> Maybe one day. One day they'll listen to me. They'll run into one of the videos and they'll have some mercy on me and make me a, a tamping station. Okay, hopefully. All right, that's gonna, that's gonna be okay. Again, the whole thing is that I want, th this is a Pesado distribution tool. I think they call this the iris, the, the look of it. They call it the iris and they have this kind of wood. They have it for the tamper, which I have and for the porta filter. And so I would like a tamping station with this uh, kind of wood. Well, I think that would be, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. One day, you know, even if I have to buy it, just make it for me. Come on, Pasado. Come on, Pasado. <laughs> All right. Oh man, my machine timed up. Okay, so here we go. Let me, maybe I got to get you guys in a little bit closer. And maybe I'll run right here. Let's try this. Okay, hopefully it's focused. Again, I've been trying to like uh, better my technique on focusing, making sure things are focused all the time, but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. One of these days I'll get it right. Okay, so we're just doing some uh, WDT. If you're not familiar with this process, it's just uh, some little thin needles that kind of declump your coffee. I mean, there's no clumps here to begin with, but the main thing we're trying to do is just make sure that the density of coffee is the same everywhere so that uh, hopefully we get, a, we get an even extraction once the water starts to go through the puck. So that's, that's the thinking behind it. Hopefully it works. Okay, I'm gonna have to put you guys in another angle again. All right, things should be focused there. So now we give it a little tap. Make sure the coffee goes down in there. And I'm gonna tamp with my um, Lelite tamper. I just get better results. The Pasado tamper is beautiful, but because of this little beveled edge, I can never, you know, I've been practicing, but today's not one of those days to practice. We'll practice another day. Today I wanna get hopefully the best extraction possible on both machines so I can taste the two shots and maybe I'll be able to tell a difference. Hopefully I get a perfect shot. Now, again, we're striving for perfection. I know what perfection tastes like to me with this coffee. So that's what I'm striving for. It's not just a good shot, a great shot. I want the perfect shot. And in my experience out of 50, maybe I've pulled with this, with this particular, with this coffee, uh, maybe I've gotten maybe three or four, maybe if at that, so. But we can strive for perfection today, we'll see. Give it a nice tan, and then with four points of pressure, I always kinda check it and adjust it if need be. Today it needed a little bit of adjustment, so. But right now it's nice and even everywhere. Give it a nice little polish just to make sure no coffee comes up with it. And basically that's, that's what you end up with. Okay, there's the puck prep. I mean, I gotta say that is some nice puck prep. That's the best we could hope for. Now we use the puck screen. Okay, we lock it in, and then I'll give you guys all the other angles so that we can pull the shot. Give me one second. All right, so now we have all the cameras set up, all the angles. Hopefully you guys will be able to appreciate this shot. All right, we're gonna go with the Akaya just because, you know, <laughs> I want my, my best chance of getting everything right here and the Akaya just never fails. The time more, every now and then, every now and then you might get a little glitch, but on the Akaya, it just never, 
it never it never glitches okay all right so again we're looking for 30 second pre-infusion and maybe like 45 seconds at nine bar and that's where i've been able to get the perfect shot again the extraction every single time you know there's so many variables in coffee extractions that there's always the chance that you know as much as you dial in as much as you try just this one time the water doesn't flow the same through the puck and you know whatever could happen so channeling things like that so let's see let's run it and let's see what happens so we're gonna start at five o'clock like we always do and uh, start running it when it starts to build pressure i'll I'll start closing the paddle and kind of level it off between two and a half, maybe three bar, and leave it there for about 30 seconds. And then after that, I'll ramp up slow to nine bar and get the rest of the shot. We're looking for, we, we got 18 grams in, 45 grams out. That's a one to 2.5 ratio. Okay, here comes the pressure. Level it off right around here. At 20 seconds, I'm letting it ramp up slow. That's okay. We got our first drip. Okay, we're at 27 seconds. I'm gonna start ramping it up slow. Wow, that's a nice ramp up right there. Real nice and slow. You see what a, a kind of a slow trickling that we got right here on the beginning of the shot. Uh, the time more might have just stopped counting the, uh, you know, would have just stopped timing so and the akaya just never fails okay so keep it there around nine bars we're looking for 45 grams out this timer should read about 75 seconds Okay, that puck is not falling apart at all. That's holding up like it's not even degrading. All right, we finished with 44.8 in a minute since first drip, 86 seconds. Wow, I went over by like, uh, what's that? Like 11 seconds, 10, 11 seconds. You know, we'll see. As long as I don't have bitterness, it might be spot on. It might be perfect right now, so... Uh, I'm gonna give it a quick taste and then we'll do the puck prep and uh, run a shot on the infuser and see what happens. Let's see how, let's see how it tastes. I mean, right away, I, I'm gonna know if this is perfect. Well, it's a bit hot to be able to tell, but wow, it could be just spot on. A touch of acidity you know it's not as sweet as i would have liked to have gotten it uh, it is what it is i mean i'm not gonna do multiple shots it's close enough to what i was looking for let's uh, uh grind the 18 grams for the infuser and pull a shot on that one okay so now we have our 18 grams uh let me set up the scale again make sure you guys could see this we're gonna look for retention again Okay, let me put these beans into this catch cup. Okay, so turn on the scale, make sure it's, everything's on zero there. So again, same procedure we should have. When we put it back on here, it should be on zero. 18 grams. everything went through okay zero again so perfect uh both times 18 grams in 18 grams out all right let's do some pug prep for the infuser all right so we have we have our 18 grams for the infuser now something i forgot to mention is that uh, i did uh, change the setting on the niche to 20 of course uh the niche 
the infuser at 13, uh, it would just choke. Nothing would come out. Okay, so do the declumping. Let's set up the puck prep for the infuser. Here's my dosing funnel for the infuser. It's different. The infuser uses a 54 millimeter Porta filter, not a 58. The niche catch cup is a 58 millimeter, so it wouldn't fit. But you could do it like this. Just get a, a dosing funnel. Turn it over. Now, because this one is a spouted, you don't have to worry. The tamping station is not like vital for this because it kind of sits straight. The bottomless is there. It'll be like this in an angle and it's uh, no good. So that's why I'm holding out for Posado to make me one. Come on, Posado. <laughs> All right. So this one grind, grind setting was 20, but the same 18 grams. And we're looking to get a, around a 45 to 50 second shot from the, from the uh, Brevo infuser. So we're gonna do a little bit of a distribution. There is no clumps, but like I said, the main thing here is to try to get the distribution of coffee uh, to be the same everywhere here in the puck. So just make circles and take your time with it. Again, if there's anything here that you wanna me to elaborate on, just uh, drop me a comment, I answer everybody. My favorite part of making these coffee videos is the interaction with you guys. There's really like no point in like filming myself making coffee every weekend. So, <laughs> so yeah, drop me a comment. Okay, now here's my workflow for the infuser. Okay, let me show you guys. So this is the little tamper that comes with the infuser. I never bought it like another tamper for the infuser. I always just use this but I did buy this. This is a distribution tool on one side and a tamper on the other side. The problem is if, if the grind size is perfect for the distance that you have set here, then you don't have to make any adjustment. Everything works perfect. But because from coffee to coffee, that's gonna change a whole bunch. Then let me show you what I do. First, I distribute with this, which you, know, you guys know my take on that. Uh, this probably doesn't do anything, but it's fun to spin, so why not? But you know, I don't really think that that does much. The, now the WDT, that's like a must. That will distribute everything nice and even in, um, in the porta filter and the clumps and you can distribute everything so that you have the same density everywhere. This is just moves the top a little bit. I mean, I don't see that being a big deal, but if you have the tool, use it. <laughs> now I tamp with this. Now, based on the resistance, okay, I got a little bit of resistance, but not much. So what you got to do is kind of use the same pressure every single time. So if this, when you tamp down with this one, if it gives you the right amount of resistance, then you don't need to tamp anymore. But if you notice like now that it gave me very little, though it gave me kind of like, okay, resistance, but it wasn't very little. It was kind of okay. But I think with this one, when I use the, you know, my normal kind of pressure, it will go down just a little bit. So let's, let's see. Exactly. So it went down just a little bit more. Now I do the same process. I just kind of check with four points of pressure, make sure it's even everywhere, little polish. And now it's, that's, that's how you do it, okay? So if you tamp with this and you get the right amount of pressure, then you don't need to use this. If you get no resistance, like it happens a whole bunch, or you get kind of, you know, pretty good resistance, you still might want to finish tamping with this one. If not, your tamping pressure is not the same. So basically with tamping pressure, the main thing is that you keep it consistent and you always keep it the same. So let's go to the infuser. Let me lock it in and see if we can get 45 to 50 seconds with that. And then we'll compare the two shots. Okay, I think we got everything set up properly. So let's uh, lock it in. Okay. Let's get the Akaya up here. Okay, here's my shot glass. All right, well, I beat twice, so that's odd. Okay, and I see that the camera's focused on the wrong thing. I, I think I'm gonna hand hold it anyway, because I wanna show you guys what I do next here. 
Um, I always do a manual shot, so you can hit either the two shot or the single shot, it doesn't matter. Oh, by the way, my little gauge, you're not gonna see it work, it broke a long time ago, and, uh, <laughs> but you don't really need it. It's kind of good guidance in the beginning, but once you get the hang of this and you know about timing and the yield and all of that, you kind of, you don't pay attention to that anymore. So basically hold down the button, and again, you on the infuser, you can do five, six second uh, pre-infusion while you're holding it down, is doing pre-infusion. You let it go, it ramps up to full pressure and it starts to brew your shot. So let's see if it runs for, again, I did pre-infusion for like five seconds. So even 40 seconds, it might be it might be good, we'll see. I would say anything between 40 and 50, we're gonna be just fine. So round two, Brevo Infuser versus Lalique Bianca. Okay, you press it again, and that will stop the, the shot from running. I stopped it with 45.2, so pretty much it's like a half a gram difference between this one and the other one. So that's uh, pretty much spot on. Let me give it a quick taste test. I'll let you guys know. While they're very similar, I'm gonna have to go, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go head to head here. Let's go to the other counter. I'll set the camera up and let's talk about it. All right, friends, so here's the one from the Bianca. By the way, I tasted it another time just, but you know what, it's not, it's not perfect. <laughs> I, again, I've, I, like, I, like I already said, you know, I've pulled like 50 shots or more with that coffee. Only two or three times I've gotten it perfect to what I consider perfect. Who knows, maybe this bag, although it's the same coffee, it just can't give me the same thing that I, every now and then you could find in this coffee. Of course, the, the crema from the Bianca had already dissipated, but the coffee's still hot. I would say warm, it's not really hot, hot. It's at a good temperature. Okay, here's the one from the infuser. Um, okay. Remember with the dark roast? With the dark roast, it was obvious. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was obvious. The one for the infuser, it, I just got it better that time. I know that the Bianca should be able to pull a better shot of uh, espresso with any coffee of any roast level. I know that. So it becomes, you know, the difference is gonna um, come to like the, the, the person making it, You're, you know, the, the operator, okay? And your experience and Again, a little bit of luck, okay? Not only your skill level, but there's so many variables. The way the water flows through the puck is gonna be different every single time, no matter what you do. You know, neither coffee is perfect. Neither one is perfect, but the Bianca is just a little bit better. In what sense? Um, I, I think the Bianca shot is a little bit smoother right now. It's a little bit smoother. Has a, a touch more sweetness to it. Uh, I would say they both have like roughly the same acidity level. It's kind of mild. It's not very high, but it's definitely present. Yeah, definitely the Bianca's a little bit smoother. Um, but you know, they're close. They're really close, but the Bianca shot, it's a little bit better. Now, let me tell you guys something that happened the very first time I was filming it, uh, trying to film the video. So as I was dialing in, again, I was dialing in the coffee and filming everything. I filmed like 10 different shots, and hence why, you know, the GoPro blowing up. <laughs> Okay, there was just a lot of clips, a lot of filming, um, and that, that's what happened. So for me to get like the really close to perfection, it took me like five shots on each machine. And uh, even at that, it was, 
something like what I'm getting right now. Maybe from this particular bag of this Duncan. And by the way, if you ever pick up this Duncan coffee, make sure it's the original. Okay, don't get, it's gotta be the original. So, um, you know, like I was saying, uh, you know, it, on, on that day, I kind of dialed it in pretty much the same like what I have here today. It was not that perfect, perfect shot that I've been able to find on that rare occasion with this coffee. It was pretty much the same thing I have here now. And you know, the coffee on that day, it, it ran out. It was just like, I couldn't keep going. <laughs> and then the thing happened with the camera. I lost the clip. I just scrapped the whole project. But basically what I gotta say is that I have gotten the perfect shot on the infuser, I have. So I know the infuser, at least with this medium roast, it's able to still give you that perfect shot, you can dial it in. Definitely also with darker roast coffees, you can also achieve like a really, really good shot. It may be perfect, I don't know. And again, I'm not an expert. This is from the point of view of a coffee hobbyist. Okay, I'm a hobbyist, I'm not an expert. So, but I do have quite a bit of experience by now. And I can tell you that the infuser could give you that perfect shot on like a dark roast and a medium roast like this. But what you're gonna find and what I saw that last time I, when I tried to record the video is that although I, I was able to dial it in roughly the same like this on that day, and it took me about, it took me the same amount of tries on both machines, five shots, okay? But what I do have to say is that from the very first shot on the Bianca, it was already good. Not great, but it was already good. On the Infuser, the very first shot, I, it, you couldn't drink it. The second shot was okay, but still not good. And I got good right away on the Bianca. And again, I think that's because of the flow control. On the lighter coffees, doing like that, those long extractions, that long pre-infusion, for me, it just works. It just works, it gives you, um, like another level of sweetness. You can cut out some of that like very harsh acidity. Some people enjoy like very high acidity in espresso. I, I don't, I like to get some of that out. I, I want some and on this coffee, I want just a touch, just a touch. Right now I gotta say they both have, maybe the acidity is at the right level, but the sweetness and that caramel taste that I can get out sometimes, that's what's missing. Okay, but the acidity is pretty much spot on. Um, what else can I say? So I think as the coffee gets lighter and lighter, that's when you're gonna see that the Bianca starts to pull ahead. You're just gonna get better results easier with the Bianca, okay, than with the infuser. Uh, when you're dealing with a, a darker roast uh, coffee, I don't think, at least in my experience, I, I struggle with dark roast on the Bianca. I don't, I don't know why, but I, I, I really do. You guys have seen through the videos that it's, it's been a little bit tough for me to get the, you know, get that. It, it always seems, seems to give me a little bit of bitterness. I, it's, I, I don't get it. And the infuser, I don't, I don't get that. I can, I can get that out easier than on the Bianca. It's got to be something I'm doing. So, you know, one day I'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's give it another, another taste. Today I have a little bit more like fruitiness. The coffee has more fruitiness, less caramel, less sweetness, little more like tartness, like fruity tartness, like maybe like berries or something like that. Maybe a little whiny. This one, uh, it's just not as, um, this one's a bit more edgy. It's not as uh, smooth as the one on the Bianca. That's maybe all I could say because they taste very similar. Okay, let's. Yeah, definitely. This one's just smoother. It's smoother. Could be a touch sweeter. This one's a little bit more savory. You know when I tell you guys that it's like that salted caramel? Uh, there's like a saltiness to it. Uh, this one has a, a bit more of that. Um, 
and this one is just more rounded and just nicer, smoother, and a little bit sweeter. That's it, so round two, I'm gonna have to give it to the Bianca today. And like I was telling you, it's very important. You know, when I was dialing it in, I just got a lot more good shots on the Bianca than on the Brevo. And it's, you know, that's been my experience throughout owning both machines. That with lighter roast coffees, okay, excluding the dark roast, okay, lighter roast, medium, medium lights, or even like very light coffees, the Bianca just keeps pulling farther and farther ahead of the Breville for me, okay? And again, because, uh, mainly because I, I don't want that super high acidity, okay? And on the Breville, you can only run it for a minute. And in my experience, you know, and on, on some of those lighter coffees, you're gonna need like at least 30 second pre-infusion and then like another 45 seconds at nine bar to kind of get the coffee to get sweeter and to get rid of some of that acidity. So that's my experience. And you know what? It never seems to get bitter. The bitterness only on the dark roast, okay? So <laughs> I know how to recognize the bitterness because as soon as I try to do a dark roast, then things flip. For some reason, I don't get that bitterness on the infuser but the bitterness is very hard to tame on the Bianca. It's doable, I've done it, and I've told you guys I, I, I've done it, but it just always, it's hard to get rid of. Let's, let's just put it that way, at least for me, you know, it's, I know eventually I'll find out exactly why, what it is I need to do to get rid of the bitterness on the dark roast coffees, and you know, I'll report back if I ever figure it out, but for now, you know, do we need a round three? I think it's pretty much evident what's going on here. You know, as long as you're not trying to do like light coffees, because even this medium, I've done it on the infuser where it's been, uh, you know, it's been perfect. I've gotten the perfect shot from the infuser. And today they're very, you know, they're pretty close, okay? Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's anything else left to say here. Uh, you can get good shots. A medium, a darker roast coffees on both machines, pretty easily on both. The lighter you go, the easier it becomes to get those really good shots from the Bianca. And it becomes more and more difficult on the infuser. That's it, that's the bottom line. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Anyway, maybe the next video we're gonna review this. Uh, I remember that I picked it up because, I, you know, the, as far as the tasting notes, I don't remember what they are and I'm not gonna read it, you guys know how I like to guess, but, um, but what I do remember is that it's some kind of funky processing and it sounded fun. So we're gonna try that. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll do the, the, the Good Brothers coffees. You know, next time I'll pull some shots with this coffee because I remember this being like, wow, for straight shots, I think this was like the best espresso I've like maybe ever had. So that's why I bought another bag so I can revisit that. And this one I've never tried. This is a new coffee that they have, so we'll, we'll get around to reviewing it. So stay tuned here on the channel. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Uh, you know, the interaction between us below in the comments is really what makes it worth it filming these coffee videos. I really enjoy, uh, you know, sharing with you guys in the comments. I've learned a whole bunch from you guys. Uh, if, if you saw something here, if you just ran into this video, saw something here that you want me to elaborate on, you know, ask me, I answer everyone. Uh, so yeah, please give the video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Thank you for watching.